I'm surrounded by objects and patterns, some familiar, some strange. When I look at a cube, what am I really seeing? Packets of light reflected from the cube hit the retina in the back of my eye, and the retina cells send signals to my optic nerve, which leaves my eye carrying the signals to my visual cortex. When the signals get there, groups of cells recognize and respond to lines of different orientations. So a collection of lines can appear as a coherent object, such as a cube. And the more familiar the object is, the easier it is to see. Perhaps too easy. Ever since I can remember, I've observed my surroundings and categorized them and organized them. I used to live in Reading in the UK, and in fact, I lived there for 32 years, and then I moved to Bath. And I had to learn a whole new set of surroundings, a new set of people, a new set of one-way streets, a new set of shops. For six months, I was bombarded with new observations, and I found it very tiring to make sense of my new environment. And then, little by little, by observing differences and similarities and putting the people or things into the same or different groups, I reduced the complexities of the places and people I saw to a series of simpler models. And eventually, my concept of Bath became so completely catalogued and modelled that I was in danger of responding to the model and not to the reality. I was imposing my own pattern onto the environment. I saw what I wanted to see. I heard what I wanted to hear. Why? Because it's easy. Because I didn't have to think. Because I can go on to autopilot and think of something else. Is this a pattern of reality or an assemblage of things which I've just connected in my mind? So, as a biologist, I go to nature. The living world is a battleground. See and be seen, be seen and be eaten. Disappear or be different and you might survive. We will confuse you with vision, sound, pattern, orientation, size, context, perspective and the way these things interact. But we can present you with all these things in a perfectly safe environment. Art is a tool for survival in a changing world. Do the lines on my hand spell out my future or merely give comfort? The growth of my hand was affected by my mother's hormones, which affected other growth processes at the same time. So my hand has some true messages, but some false ones as well. If I close one eye, or put my hand over it, I can still see objects in three dimensions. I don't need to see a slightly different picture in each eye to be able to see something as a solid. And when the light shines from a different direction, it picks out different parts of the object. Is it near? Is it far away? Will it eat me? Could I eat it? Camouflage is misdirection, although not all misdirection is camouflage. But the octopus is a master of misdirection. The octopus swims away, passing waves of movement down its flattened body and keeping close to the seabed. It's a flatfish! It dives down a hole and sends up two colourful tentacles. It's a poisonous sea snake! Misdirection can be accidental. The minor bird in captivity is a remarkable mimic. But in the urban jungle, you might hear an ambulance, a mowing machine, a telephone. Did I really hear what I thought? Or did I hear a minor bird?
There are several plants which do a similar trick. An example is the Venus flytrap. This has a modified leaf, which is a spring. The leaf's red, which attracts a fly. And then the car fly kicks a hair on the leaf. And if it does that several times, the leaf snaps shut. It traps the fly and digests it. So the surface of the leaf is a landing pad, then it's a trap, and then it's the inside of a stomach. Is this an object or a hole? What might the advantages be? Again, look to nature. The puffer fish is relatively small, but when frightened it looks dangerous by expanding itself swallowing seawater. Size matters. The internet is awash with advertisements for breast implants and Viagra. Anything to increase size and impressiveness. But it's all relative. For one thing to be big, <laughs> another has got to be small by comparison. In the advertisement for a tiny car, the passengers are even smaller. So, how big is the cube? How does its apparent size affect your judgment of what it is? So, we must go back to our origins in nature. We must use all our senses. Listen, look, think, question the patterns you see around you, question your assumptions, but always remember we are here because our ancestors were successful in surviving. So we already have our success built in. We're here because we're here. <laughs>